and we're just 40 miles northeast of Scottsdale, yeah, up in the Cape Creek area. Beautiful lake, has a lot of nice scenery and cactus and stuff like that. But what we're going to do is come up and teach you some tricks on Texas rigging. So Texas rigging is really, really easy. You know, you just have a, a bullet weight. I'm just using a quarter ounce bullet weight, number two odd hook, and a brush hog, zoom brush hog. Now I run that up to the keeper part on the hook, and then I'm gonna to try to keep that brush hog as, as straight as possible, so I just bend it, and I just put it like that. I do have a little bobber stopper on there, just in case we get by a tree or something, but I like to, uh, zooms float, so I like to keep that bobber stopper like an inch or two above the weight, so that way it kind of comes up, you know. So this, this uh, little trick here is, is amazing, and it catches fish, you know. You know, we're gonna just cast out on little, little, we're on a very, very steep bluff here. You know, drops off real fast. There, oh, missed him. Let me try again, just a little one. Sometimes you get these really little fish and, and uh, they just like to peck at the, the tail ends of these brush, brush hogs. And I'll show you why, why they, these little ones like eating this. I like to, in the springtime like this, is mimic a crawdad too, is I put chartreuse on the tail. Just on, dip it on the very, very end of the tail. And that seems to attract the bass a little bit better. So we're gonna just kinda fish some of this steep stuff. I like the steep stuff in the summertime because bass like to come up, move up and feed, and they like a short distance to do it. You know, the wintertime, uh, fish like staying in the flats a lot. And so uh, that's a good place to fish in the wintertime. But in the summertime, I like these real steep bluffs. I do really good on those. So, you know, I may, I may be out in 50 feet of water, which I'm not, but I'm in 25 feet of water. But I can cast up close to the bank, you know, just kind of flick it up there four or five feet off the bank, let it go down. So basically, I've got to find out exactly where these fish are. I mean, you know, I'm fishing every little nook and cranny out there, you know, uh, that comes into the lake. Little, everything that you see, that little rocks that are entering in the lake, those are all good spots to fish. Sometimes, you know, you'll be along rock like this, and all of a sudden, you got a little wash here with a uh, pebble rock or little rocks as big as your fist, you know. As the cameraman scrolls over there, you can see all that, all that rock there. So I'm gonna make a cast. You never know, there might be a nice bass up there, and he might just be, you know, might just be eating crawdads or wanting to eat a crawdad up there. So we're gonna throw that out. I've got that 90 second rule. I'm gonna let it go down, hit the bottom, take up my slack. It's getting heavy, set the hook, and there's a fish. That quick. See, that we call that one, got lucky and called that one right. You know, right on the rocks, he was up there eating crawdads. Small fish, but hey, you know, when you're bass fishing and you're, and you're, new, you're using new techniques or you're trying new techniques, this is a good way to go. Whoops. Oh boy. This one got hooked in the gill. Get him back in the water. So I'm just gonna like, get this blood off the boat. That one kind of bled all over. I'm gonna show you a trick to get this blood off real quick. If you, uh, if you do catch a fish like I just caught and, uh, and he's bleeding, if you leave that blood and it dries, it will stain your carpet. So the best thing you can do is take time, put your rod down. I'm gonna grab a rag behind the cameraman here real quick. I'm gonna wet this and what you can do is just put as much water on here as you can. You know, and let that soak in. And then just kind of, you know, just kind of wipe it up like that. And then that way uh, you, won't, uh, you won't have that blood drying on your carpet. Yeah, I caught him right in the end of the gill, and uh, it uh, kind of just, you, not all of them do that, bleed like that, but you know, some of them do. And uh, 
this is just a good little tip that you know you can you can use and that way you don't waste all that there or or have to come back with a strong cleaner and clean that off saves you from having to buy cleaner at a, la a later time well let's just find a few other spots along this like this chunk rock along here just like we said over in that little gully over there that little cut sometimes they're up there feeding on feeding on crawdads you know seems like once they get a little tired of uh, feeding on shad they want to get oh, that was a little one you can tell them little ones they just go pop 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 like okay. the best kind of bite you can get with a jig or a brush hog is to have that fish pick that up and just start swimming with it. That's the that's that those are the big ones. Or just that little tick, you know, and he's trying to crush that in his crushers. Those are those are good bites to have. But those little machine gun bites, t -t 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 -t, those are those little suckers biting on the tail. So we're just gonna let this wind just push us down here real quick. And uh fire up on some of these uh, little gullies in here like this, little cuts, little points. You can afford to get that close to the, to the bank or the rocks because it drops off pretty fast. So I'm doing that 90% rule, you know, it's down on the bottom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it a couple times like that. You know, and I'm not going to waste time sitting there. I'm going to just reel in, fire another one way up there. Right where those rocks are coming into the water, that could be a bass just waiting for a crawdad because those rocks will run right down into the lake. Well, that could be a place where those crawdads are just coming out of the rocks and that bass is just waiting for them, you know, or there's two or three of them there. In this case, on this there wasn't any. So we're just gonna keep fishing this deep stuff, moving along real fast. I'm not letting it go down and fish it all the way to the boat. I'm just going on that 90% rule that that fish is gonna be there when I cast in. I'm looking for only aggressive fish right now. I'm fishing fast along here. We're trying to cover as much of the lake and a lot, a lot of different scenery as we can just to show you the lake also. You guys that live in Arizona and watching these videos, you'll be able to know just about where we're fishing. You know, all this is good. There's fish on every one of these points and down in through here. You just gotta have that technique down, you know, and what to use, what color, what technique to use. And this is, uh, it's 10 o'clock, 10.05. So the bite turns on, starts turning on about now, but you still have to find those fish, you know, Right there where I just cast it, that rock coming out, anything sticking out, farthest out in the lake, that's a good spot. That's where they're hanging out. I didn't quite get right on the end of that, but next cast it will. I'm in 34 feet and there's a lot of fish down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a uh, brush hog which is like a jig. And I'm gonna throw a half ounce football head too and try that. That, that also works you know, in the, in the lake here. This is a good football head jig. I'm just gonna make it real simple. Not gonna buy a fancy, use a, pull out a fancy jig or something that costs five bucks or three dollars or four dollars and then put a crawdad on the back. We're just gonna use the plain old Yamamoto you know, and uh, double tail, mop top and, and uh, get those. So there ought to be a fish right here. There's plenty of fish. There's plenty of fish down deep. So, so if I'm not catching them right on the bank or off the bank a little ways, you know, I'm gonna try some, some of these little bit deeper ones. So I'm gonna go, instead of casting on the bank, I'm gonna cast way out there in 22 to 25 feet. And I'm gonna let that sink. And I'm gonna work that back. Working on the bottom, because that's where they're eating their crawdads. 
Remember, after it gets on the bottom, you can just kind of slowly pull that. But you need to find out, you know, do they want that hop like that? Or do they want that thing just pulled on the bottom real slow like this? You just, you just got to kind of find out what, what those bass are after. There's a bass that just came up chasing minnows right there. Let's just flick into that real quick and see. Can't go wrong when you see a bass chasing shad. You just, you know, and especially if it's a little one, there might be a big one, you know, or two underneath it. Being lazy and letting the little ones kill the shad. There's one. Oh, little missile coming way out of the water. Another little one. Little ones are filling their oats today. Guys, when, you, when, you, when you're going along and you see a point like this and that point goes way, way out in the lake, don't cut right over the middle of that. Go around it and fish it. Don't cut the fish off. Too many guys just keep going right down the lake and it's 25, 30 feet here and all of a sudden it's 10 feet there. You know, you just cut off the best fishing. So swing your boat out a little bit. You know, if, you're, if you move out into 25, 30 feet of water, that's good. Now you can cast up on the point where the fish are living. So, you know, you still can throw that out. There he is. It's a little guy, but perfect point for this. All right, one, two, three, here he comes. Hello. Come on, little guy. Boy, sometimes you get that right in the top of that mouth and they just, uh, There's a bite. There's a live one. Another one of them babies. Man. We run into the baby factory along this, uh, along this, this shoreline. There you go, little guy. Boy, when they hit that water, they're gone. Brush hogs are so easy just to stick them back on the hook. Make sure that brush hog is nice and straight when you put it back on there. You know, maybe I can get another one off this uh, point before. Uh... How about something bigger than one pound? Right there. Uh oh, there's a bite. Got him. Whoa, tail walker. And in the boat. There we go. Come on, little guy. Come on. Take that hook out. Release him in the lake to bite on another day. So what did you do? Just throw it out there and then set the hook? Yep, I just threw it out and sent the hook. <laughs> yep, sent, instead of sent, sent, simped. All right, let's simp the hook again on this next one. Fish, little one. Another little rat. We're on these little ones today, aren't we? Goodbye, little guy. So anyway, so we switched over to a jig right now, meaning a half ounce jig. We got a little smoke sparkle on there, little tips are green, just a lead head. That's all it is. It's real simple.
Well, there's a lot of ways to fish a jig too. Sometimes you can just crawl it on the bottom and then just pull it off the bottom like that. Or sometimes you can just sit there and just crawl it along the bottom and just reel like this. So it's just skirting along the bottom, bump, bumping the rocks. You can swim them. Sometimes that works. Just gotta find out that technique, what they want. What the secret of the day, flavor of the day is gonna be. They cast good, because they're heavy, half ounce. 17, 17 feet, feet here. Got a nice little reef and point coming out over there, so maybe we'll get lucky and get one off of that. Whoa. Jigfish. Ah. Nice little jigfish. Right off that point right there, right where he should have been. Caught him just swimming it right across the point. Oh, there's the shad. I see the shad there in the water. There's a fish, right under the shed. Here he comes. A little bigger. And, oh yeah. There you go. That's a little bit bigger, huh? Let's uh, go back to that reef because there's a bunch of shad there and we'll uh, try seeing if we can't catch a couple more before we call this a day. It is. Another little guy, huh? Let's see what's out there. Maybe there's some bigger ones underneath them. There's a bite. Got him. You on? Oh, hair better. There's a good one. A little bit better than what we were getting. Catch and release. Right off that little point there, you called that one. Well, that figures perfect conditions, you know. Wind's blowing like heck. Blowing right over a reef. There's one right there. Another one. That's a little one. Well, they're eating this jig, aren't they? Right here in the wind. It's just throwing it right out over the reef and got a comes from the shore, dips down, and goes right up into the, the mountain over there. The wind's creating the bite, making the shad get all stirred up. The plankton gets all stirred up. The shad eat that, and the fish move in and eat the shad. So, all right. We're right over there, right by the, whoops. Can't catch any like that. Got to fix this, baby. There we go. Oh yeah. Let's give it another try here. I'm just gonna slow roll it right over that reef.
There's one. Whoa, we got a good one. Finally, we can land him. Got another one. Oh yeah, whoa, whoa, come on. Whoa, you don't want to come in, does he? That's a good fish. After catching those little ones, Oh yeah, that's what we were waiting for. Waiting in the show. Get that out of his mouth. There we go. Well, he just decided that, destroyed that jig, I'll tell you. That's a nice one, isn't it? Look at that. Good way to end the tea, end the uh, video. And we just want to thank you for letting us come to you on YouTube and other ways to uh, show you how to catch bass at Bartlett Lake. So with that, we'll see you on the next trip.